Support Laneside. Get something cool. Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Laneside Reviews. As always, I'm the bearded beast, Rob Johnson, joined once again by Scoops Porter. And we've got some really exciting stuff to show you on this episode, so why don't we take it Laneside and see how it's stacked up. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, once again, we are joined by our speed dominant player, Wayne Porter. Yeah, he's bowling on the easy house shot. Now, uh, we had an obsession, but now we've got the obsession tour. Which is a little bit different. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, right out of the box. That thing hooked. Yeah. Wayne, uh, Wayne is bowling in his benchmark spot. And uh, that sucker hooked. It went Brooklyn. It went to Brooklyn. Now this is, we said it, we had the Obsession, then the Obsession Tour. Uh, the big difference between these two, a uh, lot more surface on this. The Obsession had a, a 500-1500. Yeah. This is a 500,000, no, so it's earlier and smoother. Yeah. Uh, different cover stock. This is the Tour V2 Solid. Yeah. Uh, also a much different core with that flip block on top. It's changed the differential. Sorry, without that flip block on it. Without top. the flip block, yeah. My they apologies. took it off, yeah. They took it off, and it changed the differential. It lowered it from 050 to 034, yeah. but kept the same asymmetric uh, differential. Yeah. So it kind of turned it into a benchmark asymmetric? Those guys on tour need something. Uh, they don't need the help with the flip block, so... <laughs> Well, it, you know, that that is a very good point. Right. A lot of players, uh, especially tournament players, when you're on these very tough patterns, they need equipment that is very controllable. You yeah. look at some of the best balls of all time. The Antel was an 030. Yeah. The IQ Tour is an 030. Yeah. Um, well, I think every one of the big ones right now, I think the Web Tour was an 030 as well. Oh, probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of those guys, they had their big success with these balls that have the, s the smaller cores Yeah, uh, that they can manipulate more with uh, changing the, the surface of the shell and using their hand position. Yeah. There you go. Look at that. And still it's still hooks. hooking. So at this point, at his benchmark spot, yeah. it's time to move left. Yeah. Obviously, this thing is stronger than where he usually throws. But it's not it's not like he's missing it a ton. It's just no, a it's just a little bit there, yeah. And that's the thing is too. Like we said, it's that's five hundred grit lower. Yep. Right. So that means it's going to hook a little well, bit earlier. Not hook. Remember. No, sorry. Roll. That's it's right. It's going to start rolling earlier. It's going to start to spin up faster. Yeah. It's going to have. It's going to lose energy faster. Yeah. Remember, because surface doesn't create hook. It just no. allows it to start hooking earlier. Yeah. Rolling earlier. That's right. Well, you know, skid, hook, roll, roll, skid, hook, skid. Yeah, skid. yeah. Well, jump up and down, do the safety dance. <laughs> Everybody, look at your hands. Hey, <laughs> just gonna say, hey. they need somebody needs to come up with better words for those three phases. <laughs> I think that's. We all know what they do. It's just the the word hook. I think really throws a Be clink into it because, because we use it for so many things. Yeah. Now here is a four and two move, off of the last couple of shots, and lo and behold. Denpen. We're in the pocket. But yeah, it was a good ball. Now, see, this is where normally if you're not doing a ball review and trying to show the ball off, you would make like a one and one move or something like that. Yep. A little bit up, a little bit back or something. Yeah. For, y for you house bowlers, uh, often if you're watching where your six pin goes, uh, a one and one with your feet or e either left or right to change the tra trajectory of your six pin or your four pin for lefties yeah. um, can be the difference between striking and 10 pinning. Oh, yeah. Uh, for you tournament players, uh, often it can be a two and one, three and one, or a whole zone change. But yeah. for house players, it's really easy. Yeah. Speaking of house players, <laughs> got another two and one move here coming, and I think a little bit more hand. Yeah, yeah you can see a little bit more rotation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! But see that held. It sat in oil longer. He didn't quite get it out to the friction, and then when it saw the friction, it made that motion. I'm going to say motion towards the pocket. Motion, yes. Motion. I like that word, motion. Still doesn't work into the three phases. but For you yeah. bowlers who have a lot of speed or um, you spin it a lot, Yeah. lots of surface, can do two things for you. One, it can make your ball a lot more controllable. Yes. And two, it can make it actually hook. Yeah. Because if a ball is spinning, it's hydroplaning. 
the more you can get it to slow down, the more you can get it to stop spinning with surface, the more chances going to happen. Some very wise man says said one time that a ball needs to slow down to hook. Absolutely. The smartest man I've ever met. Look at this. Yeah, there we go. So a little less spin. Yeah. And suddenly, boom. Yeah. Spins good sometimes. 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 Sometimes you need to spin it, but for this uh, for this speed dominant guy where he's playing. Yeah. I mean, spinning it, we could see it held pocket, but you're also yeah. gonna have a more hi more hydroplaning. Yeah. Speed dominant players, we don't want the ball to hydroplane. No. They already have enough yeah. enough problem getting it to go through the, the pins. Yeah. So he's just gonna try to roll this nice off his hand. Yep. And that's a little bit see. aside. But Rolled it and. Uh, it's still a little straight. Maybe he I shouldn't mean. have moved. <laughs> for those of you keeping track, he made a, a another move, but for some reason he moved right this time. Yeah. Just to see what would happen. Well, you got to test that versatility. Right. I see this. I mean, watching Wayne, I see this more as the benchmark. Yeah. It's if I needed something to hook more or less, I'm yeah. going to change balls. Uh, I really like this for speed dominant players as a benchmark ball, probably yeah. more than something like an Intel or a bonus. It's just it's just got a little bit more teeth, a little bit overall more tumble. Yeah, because you can see here in the bonus, this is our benchmark. He plays it very tight. Yeah. And you can see a tiny bit of deflection down lane. Yeah. Uh, because it is hydroplaning. It never it has such a long hook zone. Yeah. Where this one, you watch the comparison, you can see there's a little bit overall motion down lane. And he it's just got it a little wider, but yeah. m a lot better motion down lane for yeah. him. And that open that tends to open up your pocket because you got a little bit of bumper inside, a little bit of gra grab outside. So. Absolutely, more more uh, more entry angle, yeah. more carry. Now here you are. Of course, you struck with this. Hey, <laughs> it's got surface. It's got surface. It's a solid. Yeah. It's benchmarky, and yeah. it's got surface. And surface. So yeah. Nick's gonna strike yeah. out of the box. Asymmetric, you know, all those fun stuff. Well, that is the benefit of being a matched player. Yeah. Symmetric, asymmetric. You yeah. can choose the motion that you want. Yeah, and that's the thing is there's been days that I've been a little slow, but I realized afterwards I knew what I was supposed to do and jump between the asymmetric and the symmetrics. It's yep. it's there. It's just, you know. Yeah. Oh, do, you can do the weight. Oh, pat yourself, uh, pat yourself <sighs> on the back there. You're doing the Barry Horowitz. All good. Here we go. So here you are at, at your benchmark shot again. Yeah. Just to Just make, to sure, make that, sure. Yeah. Wasn't a fluke. That was a little bit higher, but still, high flush is beautiful. Now, one thing people forget about is the size of your pocket. Yes. Okay. Something we don't talk about. Often, the better players that are out there, they mm. will try to find out how wide their pocket is by seeing where they can strike from. Yeah. How high on the head pin, how light on the head pin. Yeah. You've thrown one light and heavy and carried really yeah. well. I would say this ball makes your pocket very wide. Yeah. I've always liked when I could carry light. Yep. Because I, I told um, a young guy one time, he's old now and married and has kids and doesn't bowl anymore, but <laughs> I told him, I said, Corey, if you're hitting light, that's good. And he looked at me. Oh. And I said, that's why. I said, if you hit solid in the pocket, but you were carrying light, you won't leave a 10 pin because you'll hit nice in the pocket and get that thing. And then you know to move again and start hitting light again. Yep. And you can, that's one way to stay ahead of the motion, but no, you're, you're absolutely it, right? right. You can, cause you can watch that. If you, if you get better carry light, yeah. As, I mean, we've talked about this with twister pins, Yeah. twister pins. You have to either hit heavy, heavy. Yeah. high or light. If you yeah. throw them in the pocket, they actually have less carrying energy yeah. and you're more apt to leave a 10 pin. Yeah. So you've already made a three and two move here. Still, you can see it. See that one went down. Do you ever not strike? Up. <laughs> Last Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you are already six yeah. and four deeper from where you started. Yeah. And this ball looks great. Yeah. No, I, I really enjoyed throwing this one. It was very easy to throw. And I mean, I haven't even had to do anything to trick the ball yet. No, so, you haven't. I mean, That's, I mean, we've talked about that in other videos yeah. when, when it comes time to get a little more rounded yeah. or not. And that's always a bonus, too. If I'm throwing this well with a ball and I haven't done any of that, when the heads start chewing up um, or I got to run into somebody's track, yep, 
that was a little bit more around a little ten. But a little ten pin there, yeah. Um that's the thing is being able to come around the side, I can stay in the ball and not necessarily move my foot. Foot feet. Feet. Um and trip it, trick it so it gets down a little bit cleaner and then jumps off the end of the pattern. Absolutely. I have, I've had a couple balls that I can really do that with and you get to stay in it longer. Yep. And and it's just it's just fun just to be able to do that. So Oh, it looks like we get one more shot from me here. If the pins ever show up. If they ever show up. We're gonna get this uh, we're gonna get the, the scoop stance. Oh no. no. Alright. So one more here. Made another three and two move. Not one that came around a little bit more. Got it wider. Ooh. And there we go. Yeah. So at uh what is it here? Uh three, six, nine at nine left, it finally ran out of energy yeah. for you. But that's okay, because... Then you could come around it. Come around it. Or later on in the block, I know that I might be able to play it that far out. Yep, absolutely. This is the kind of ball that... Wow. First out of your bag to make all your decisions. Yeah. Very easy to read. Uh, very easy to judge the ball motion off of this. Now, here you are with our benchmark ball. And you can see you're right between, just kind of in s on the third arrow there, yeah. between second and the third. Uh, not a lot of motion on it. Very smooth, very controllable. And here you are. Huh. That looks pretty close. I don't, th wow, The I don't think you could get closer. Maybe a board? Yeah. Just a different uh, motion. motion. Yeah, it's just a little bit wider and picked up slightly different. But. Yeah, it was just a different motion, yeah. which, you know, we've talked about this before. Here I am bowling. Yeah. Uh, sometimes if you're in a ball, say a symmetric, and it's not carrying, yeah. if you have a ball with a similar motion that's asymmetric, oh, look at that. Look at wow. that thing. Um, you can change your carry because it's going through the pins, the pins differently. differently. Yeah, because you always think that the the symmetric's going to move a little bit sooner and have a, a bigger... It's more sweeping, longer, longer motion. Yep. Yeah, where the asymmetric has a, a smaller hook window. Yep. So it's just changing it just a couple feet here and a couple feet there without having to do anything with your feet or your hand yep. or anything. And those those little changes will change how the ball sees the friction, yeah. how it deflects. The, all these things are how we fine-tune our strikes. Yeah. How you go from... And, and some of these are really fine-tuned. How you go from a 210 or 220 average bowler to a 220, 230, 240 yeah. average bowler. It's these small, fine details. I'm just trying to get back up to 210. Uh, so uh, I've already made, after that shot, I made a big five board move left. And there you go. Seems good to me. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, you can see I'm throwing it hard. Yeah. Um, I've come back with a little bit more ball speed. I'm still pretty yeah. rev dominant, but I'm uh, able to throw this one hard, and it doesn't see the fronts. Yeah. I was surprised about this because of how smooth it was for you guys with how much surface was on it. I was expecting it to really bog down in the front. Yeah, which I've seen you th have that problem before with a lot of stuff that very strong surface. Oh, yeah. Well, when we, right. when we looked at the uh, the other obsession, yeah, um, I had to make a huge move left. So did you to get yeah. it into the oil yeah. because it was so slow and so, so reactive. Yeah. This one... Well, not that shot. <laughs> <laughs> nice air mail. Yeah. Um, this one felt like it still got down lane r fairly well. It didn't yeah. slow down really, really quick. Yeah. Even knowing it has lesser, a lower surface, it seems to the the cover stock is just slightly. I don't want to say weaker, but just slightly different enough that, that it, tour it, V2 yeah. cover stock is yeah. different enough. Yeah. Yeah. Different Absolutely. enough that it got it gets kind of a little cleaner. So I'm going to stay in the same place after that airmail shot. And let's see if I can actually do it right. <laughs> There's no guarantee yeah. this is me. I mean, I, I did this video, and I don't even remember <laughs> what you did. Yeah. <laughs> There's a higher than likely possibility that I throw this one either in the ditch or like through the nose. Because that hooked a lot. Or, I mean, sorry, that one didn't hook a lot. Yeah. I think this one's going to go in the pocket. I just have a feeling. I'm glad one of us does. <laughs> actually, that looks pretty good. And... See, Ooh. I love that shot. That that fifteen out to eight. That's that's beautiful. When you, I feel that's one of the biggest pockets yep. that I've seen at our house. Now I say I was standing thirty there. Yeah. Um, a lot of people I've had this discussion with. Um, I'm a okay. When you line up, you often line up with your left or your right foot. I line up with my slide foot, so my left foot. Okay, so I slide. I line up with my slide foot as well. Yeah. Okay. 
people don't realize when you put when you put your ball straight down, you have to account for the distance between your foot and where your ball is and your shoulders. Yeah. Um, like for some of the female athletes I work with, they only have a five or seven. Whoa, another airmail there. Um, another, they have a five or seven board difference between where they're lining up and where their ball actually falls. Yeah. I've got a almost a fifty inch chest. So if I'm standing on thirty, my ball I'm actually lining up closer to twenty. Yeah, and that's the thing is technically, technically I was always taught that you want to lay the ball down six boards inside your foot. Yes. So that's a lot of getting your body out of the way. Biomechanically, kind of not yeah. everyone can do that. There's yeah. flexibility issues. Yeah. Now I get my ball pretty close to my ankle, yeah. but if you look, I have to. I create a pretty. Um, a pretty wide, what we call a power V or power Y yeah. in the end of my stance so that my arm can get down towards there. Yeah. I have a fair amount of body tilt. You can see I have to have a, an extreme tilt on my yeah. shoulder. That's a nice one there. That was actually another That was another three and two left. Yeah. And then you have some players that, you know, tend to walk sideways as they go too. Absolutely. Right? And if, as long as you're consistent, like I am, and yep. it's about five boards every time, then like I might line up on 15, but I'm going to finish on 20. Yep. So a lot of the two-handers, yep. uh, their hop step or their their step before, they'll take a step sideways. Yeah. As long as you do it the same every time, that's yep. all we care about. Exactly. So here I am. Uh, I'm going to play with the rotation and my tilt a little bit just to kind of see what I can do with this ball. Uh, we've seen it. It looked great at 25. Uh, it looked pretty good at 30 and 32. Whoa, you see, that, that one was, was very rolled. Yeah. Very little tilt on that one. Uh, but still got through. I was expecting that to deflect off. It was nice because you just kind of let the ball do all the work and just kind of say, here you go, you know. Um, so, what do you think? Final impressions? Um, I like this ball. It's... It was, like I said, very forgiving. Yes, um, I would agree with that. Uh, nice and rolly, but not extremely rolly. Yeah. So that that smaller core, that yeah. that O uh, thirty ish core, definitely made it a lot more controllable. Yeah. Like you said, it was nice to be able to keep it somewhat in front. Like, I know I'm not gonna be able to keep everything in front of me, especially with such a strong oh. strong cover. But yeah, I mean, even you, that was straighter, even. Straighter well, than the it. last one, right? You can say I've changed yeah. my tilt a couple times just to see what I can do with it. Yeah. I'm kind of impressed with it. Um, now, for me, I prefer symmetric benchmarks Yeah. Uh, because of my tilt, because of my rotation. I tend to prefer symmetric nice. benchmarks. Yeah. I could see times when I'd need this, especially if I need that ball to roll forward a little bit more. Yeah, it's a good middle to roll bat ball for you yep. to, to put in that side here right. i am with my trusty benchmark yeah you can see how much more that one comes off the spot for you compared to to me and then this one here it's gonna come off a little bit different yeah let's let's take a look at the two of them compared and they're not that just like uh just like wayne i've got them about five boards difference very similar motion yeah. especially down lane yeah oh yeah so, very interesting. I think it's a, a cool addition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a show. So, until next time, guys, we'll see you lane side.